Today, we look at a boxer who was a significant contributor to the science aspect of boxing and helped shape the style of many fighters today. How good was Gentleman James J. Corbett? James John Corbett was born on September 1, 1866, in San Francisco, California. Corbett stood 6 feet 1 and a half and had a 73-inch reach. He had an aggregate weight of 183 pounds for his career. Corbett's career spanned from 1886 to 1903. He had 11 wins. This included four losses and three draws. Five of his wins were by knockout. He also had two no contests. His win percentage was 55, and his knockout percentage was 25. Corbett is credited with being one of the greatest tacticians in boxing history. He was a scientific boxer who brought a technical approach to his offense and defense. He crafted his style in the amateurs, winning championships before joining the professional ranks. He fostered an approach that helped to push boxing more to mainstream audiences. His combination of footwork, feinting, and countering made him a formidable foe for all competition during his time. Corbett's first major fight was on May 30, 1889, when he fought one of boxing's greatest punchers and a fellow rival from San Francisco, the California terror Joe Koinsky. After four rounds, the police stepped in and stopped the fight, ending in a no contest. Six days later, Corbett and Koinsky met again on a barge. Koinsky purposely didn't bring gloves on board to make the fight a bare-knuckle contest. Corbett refused, and the two fought under the Marquess of Queensbury rules, with Corbett wearing two-ounce gloves, while Koinsky wore a pair of leather-driving gloves. The two men were bloodied and bruised as they battled back and forth, each having their moments. In the end, Corbett gained a 27th-round knockout victory after Koinsky tired and was unable to use his power to slow down the elusive Corbett. On February 18, 1890, Corbett took on former bare-knuckle champion, Jake Kilrain. Corbett was able to outbox the Hall of Fame fighter from the outside as he won a clear and uncontested decision. After knocking out Dominic McCaffrey in April of 1890, Corbett faced off against Hall of Famer the Black Prince, Peter Jackson, in a fight to the finish. Corbett viewed this fight as a means to get to a shot at the World Heavyweight Championship that John L. Sullivan held, who refused to defend his title against Jackson, who was black. The two men showed their boxing prowess in the fight as they engaged in a technical contest. Both men were great boxers and had moments when they traded hellacious shots that left them bloodied and nearly broken. After 61 rounds, the contest was stopped. This proved to be a significant boost for Corbett, who would get the championship fight he deserved, shortly thereafter. On September 7, 1892, Corbett stepped into the ring with the first recognized world heavyweight champion, the Boston strongboy John L. Sullivan. Sullivan was undefeated at the time, but had been out of the ring for nearly four years. The fight went down in New Orleans, Louisiana. The sharper Corbett masterfully outboxed Sullivan, using his jab to keep him at bay when he tried to rush, looking for a knockout. Corbett was the antithesis of Sullivan's come-forward, brawling style. Unable to effectively land on the elusive Corbett and not in the best of shape nor fighting form, Sullivan eventually started to tire and was knocked out for the first and only time of his career in the 21st round. The win sent shockwaves worldwide, and Corbett became an instant superstar. On January 25, 1894, Corbett faced Hall of Fame contender Charlie Mitchell. Mitchell was a small and elusive heavyweight, but Corbett was able to knock him out in the third round of their contest, retaining his world heavyweight title. On June 24, 1896, Corbett's next fight was against tough and rugged Tom Sharkey, a short but stocky heavyweight. Corbett hadn't fought in over a year, and the two men fought to a four-round draw. The fight was underwhelming, but did do more for Sharkey to show he was a championship-level contender. On March 17, 1887, Corbett put his world heavyweight title on the line against the fighting blacksmith Bob Fitzsimmons in Carson City, Nevada. Fitzsimmons was a world middleweight champion who packed enough of a punch to defeat elite heavyweights in his day. 
This would be the first ever World Heavyweight Championship fight to be filmed. Corbett used his footwork and speed to avoid Fitzsimmons while peppering him with jabs in the first half of the fight. He also dropped Fitzsimmons and had him badly hurt in the sixth round. Corbett couldn't close the deal, and Fitzsimmons started to catch up with Corbett as the rounds wore on. Fitzsimmons hit Corbett in the body in the 14th round with a left hook dubbed the solar plexus punch, sending him to the canvas gasping for air. Corbett could not answer the count, and Fitzsimmons became the new world heavyweight champion. Corbett again fought Tom Sharkey in 1898, losing via disqualification after his second jumped in the ring to complain to the official. This led to a May 11, 1900 matchup with then world heavyweight champion, the Boilermaker James J. Jeffries, who had dethroned Fitzsimmons. Corbett effectively outboxed the slower, lumbering Jeffries for the bulk of the fight, often making him miss with excellent defense. Like the Fitzsimmons fight, Corbett started to tire in the back half of the contest and was knocked out by Jeffries in the 23rd round of their 25-round contest, sending the crowd into shock due to the suddenness. Fitzsimmons fought Hall of Famer Charles Kidd McCoy in August of 1900, winning via fifth-round knockout at the Madison Square Garden in New York. McCoy was alleged to have lost the fight on purpose for monetary gain. After a three-year absence from the ring, Corbett again stepped into the ring with world heavyweight champion James J. Jeffries in a rematch for another shot at the title in San Francisco, on September 14, 1903. However, the larger and stronger Jeffries controlled every facet of the fight offering Corbett no pathway to victory. The fight was stopped after Corbett's corner threw in the towel. This was the final fight of Corbett's career. While his fight total was short, Corbett faced the best fighters of his time during that period and transitioned successfully to acting after that. Corbett was the originator of the hit and don't get hit defensive style, which proved successful for many champions. Corbett faced nine Hall of Famers. His most notable fights were against Joe Koinsky, Jake Kilrain, Peter Jackson, John L. Sullivan, Charlie Mitchell, Tom Sharkey, Bob Fitzsimmons, Charles Kid McCoy, and James J. Jeffries. James J. Corbett died on February 18, 1933, at 66. Corbett is one of boxing's pioneer champions and helped bring esteem to a sport viewed as savage by many. Corbett's approach to training and working his craft in the amateurs set the tone for the type of skill level we see in boxing today. Corbett was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1990.